It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, this next question is from Kyle. This is a Facebook question. It's one uh, we get, we, I feel like we get a pretty good, good, good bit, Brian. Uh, what is your opinion on income investing? I really like target, retire, target index retirement funds, but having consistent passive income sounds appealing. I'm assuming he's talking about like dividend type holdings and that sort of thing. Uh, is Core and Explore approach a good option for a young investor? A lot, of, lot, of, lot in that question, I feel like. Yeah, and it ties back once again back to my my investment history nerd stuff. Core, what, what do you say? Core and explore. Core and explore is to me the same as I've always we've always heard it as core and core satellite, satellite approach, or where you know wheel. you'll have yeah, your spoken will. I mean, you see you see all kind of terminology where you know you, you have your core investments, which is like the S and P five hundred, and then you can go and add different sweeteners, whether it's international, whether it's technique, if you want to go sector plays. All, all that's there. I want because there's so many questions there. I want to bring it back first to dividend investing because mm-hmm. I see a lot of people saying, "Hey, I, I'm on purpose seeking out high dividend stocks so I can replace more and more of my income." The the and I, I don't have a problem with dividend investing other than you get to a stage where your income is naturally going to be high um, because you're going to reach your peak earning years. You'll be paying lots of taxes, and you're like. Man, I, I just hate how I'm paying more and more taxes. And then you add the 3.8% mm-hmm. you know, Medicare surtax on it. The last thing I'm trying to do is generate more taxable sure. income. And that's what I kind of love about index funds is that index funds by their nature are very tax efficient. They don't generate mm-hmm. a ton of taxable income because they're not turning over. So there's not a lot of capital gains. The companies with you know, I think the S and P five hundred is yielding a little over one percent, and that's that is one of the things that I think is amazing when we hit bear market or recession. When you see that like the S and P five hundred yield gets over two to two point three percent, like hot diggity that's dog, awesome. because that means that's an indicator that the valuation is splendid and the water's warm. Let's go ahead and get in this thing. But it is one of those things where. I don't go after dividend yields specifically for the income because I'm trying to minimize taxes. And I also think that you you sometimes might let the the tail wag the dog. That's usually said for taxes, but it's also from, from an income standpoint because, Bo, you've bought companies back mm-hmm. when you were first starting to invest – because you were so excited at how high their oh, dividend yeah. yield was, because you like genius, you liked that building. But the tax part of me hates how inefficient dividends are, because corporations pay a tax on that income, and then you, as the individual, when you receive the money, you also pay a tax on it. That 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 bothers me, but that that's here nor there. Well, and one of the things that bother me about dividend investing is is when it comes to like investment return, it's really comprised of two components. There is an income component and appreciation component. Well, a really well diversified portfolio should likely have both of them. So I think when you focus solely on income investing, solely on generating that, you're leaving out a big half of the equation, which is capital appreciation. Rather, if you're trying to create a passive income stream, which is what I would argue the majority of our retired clients who have these large portfolios that they live off of, every month they have a deposit that hits their checking account. So they have passive income happening. Well, rather than that be dividends that are just paying and we're sending the dividends through, we're managing the portfolio from a total return perspective. We want to combine the income component with the capital appreciation component, and then we can define how much income or how much of a cash flow or how much of a withdrawal we send through to the client. If all you're doing, especially as a young person, focusing on the dividend piece of it, I think you're missing a big piece of what you could be doing from a total return perspective. I feel like I'm like the elementary school teacher. I'm trying to walk everybody through the behavioral and stuff, but you just gave the right financial planner answer. <laughs> and that's why we're a good team. It's just that we should have put your answer first sure. and then let the old man wander in the woods with all the educational <laughs> antidotes that people might want to know about it. So that was a great answer. Here's another thing that I'll throw out there. You said, Kyle, I love target retirement index funds uh, for a young investor, as do we. We think that's a great solution until your portfolio gets a critical mass of uh, $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 of investable wealth, and then you can really benefit from not only a different asset allocation, but also an asset location. If you're before that stage, if you're on your first $5,000 or your first $50,000 or even maybe your first $100,000, I wouldn't spend my time focusing on a dividend component and income generation. 
I would do the easy set and forget it, target retirement index fund, and rather I would focus on how can I save an extra $100? How can I save an extra $1,000? Focus more on your savings rate than your rate of return, and your future self will thank you. Because that, especially for a young individual, the amount that you can save now at this stage in life is exponentially more important than your rate of return this year. Do the easy part on the investing part, figure out the harder part on the behavioral side.